2012 was a learning year for the Love Fab team. The biggest issue with last year was we did not have enough seat time in the car. We were just thrashing up literally to the last minute to get the car ready to run. And as a result, we just could not test uh, as much as we wanted to. So the first time we really drove the car was at 12 and a half thousand feet. The Pikes Peak International Hill Climb is a 12.4 mile course with 156 turns. It takes place over the course of a full week. There are three practice days all in a row with a day off, uh, which is used for crew uh, preparations for the car, all that. Uh, and then the race day on Sunday. This year we started uh, practice day. It was the first time we'd really driven the car hard, uh, day one. Uh, we had our first experience with our very cold tires. It was 30 degrees uh, the morning of. So came around a corner and was just blinded by the sun. I mean, you know, the sun rises below you essentially. So uh, it, it was pretty rough. So we spun the car, uh, went off road a little bit. Luckily, nobody was uh, lost any practice time. Day two, um, had a good run the first time. Second run up, we were pushing hard because it's qualifying. So if you, don't, if you don't run fast enough, the uh, committee has the option to not let you run on race day. So pushing hard, uh, Tabitha and myself lost our spot on the mountain. We confused the corner before engineers, four engineers corner, and uh, essentially saved our lives. I was able to get on the brakes enough. We ended up launching off the mountain at about 60 miles an hour. Um, Tabitha sustained some pretty serious injuries. Uh, she dislocated four ribs and compressed her spine. So it was pretty rough. Um, she went to the hospital uh, and I went back to the shop with the car to begin the rebuild. Um, we had to be on the mountain the next morning or they would not let us run. Up all night, our crew showed up about 8 p.m. that night, uh, which was planned the week before. Uh, luckily, it was a good night for them to show. So we thrashed until four in the morning. Uh, got the car fired up, all the body panels basically glued back together. Uh, loaded up four in the morning, made it for practice Friday morning. Uh, Friday's practice went great, smooth. Car was running better than ever. We stayed at it, we got the car done, and uh, got it ready for race day. Having survived the, the big crash and getting the car back together, uh, our, our goal for race day had become to simply finish, finish the race, get to the top. Uh, and then come back next year and, and try to, you know, put our mistakes to use, learn from them, and, and try to get a fast time for 2013. Um, we did not expect to do well. Uh, like I said, we just we just wanted to finish. We lined up Sunday morning. Um, the unlimited class was right after the bikes. First cars up. Uh, cars started leaving, and then the waiting began. We knew two cars had left. We assumed the uh, the Dacia had made it to the top. We we thought that. Uh, and then about half an hour later, Paul Dallenbach's rear wing came walking by our window. His crew was carrying that, and we heard he had a huge off. Um, and that pretty much set the stage for the day. Uh, cars were catapulting off the mountain, <laughs> literally, uh, throughout the day. It was, it was a mess. So we started our run uh, about an hour after Paul Dallenbach's wreck, and we made it to Engineer's Corner, and we were forced to turn around. Uh, we had a red flag. Uh, somebody in front of us had caused an obstruction, we, we never, we weren't sure. Went down, refueled, restarted, uh, and again, we just wanted to finish. So, taking it pretty easy up the mountain. Uh, about halfway up at Glen Cove, uh, we came across Pat Doran's car, the, the Monster RS200, on the side of the road, broke down. So, that put us automatically in fourth place. You know, it's, it's a bummer to see a competitor break, but it, it's racing. So. Uh, we continued on, same pace, just, you know, wanted to get to the top. Uh, then we hit the W's, and we found the Dossie on the side of the road missing the whole uh, left side of the car. Uh, he, obviously, he had obviously had a big off. So that put us on the podium. Um, we do, <laughs> like I said, we were not expecting that. So we just continued pace, and uh, we got to the top. Uh, kind of in disbelief, you know. Uh, after the week we'd had, it was just amazing to make it. So. Uh, get up top, and there was only one other unlimited car up there, and that was the only, that was it. No other unlimited cars made it to the top that day. So, just by sticking to it, um, you know, committing, uh, following through with our commitments, getting it done, we got second place finish as, as rookies in the unlimited class. One of the biggest complaints I had with the car last year—it's not really a complaint, just an observation—was um, that we just didn't have 
the response out of the hole that I wanted. Um, down at sea level, the car was great, but at altitude, it, it was just wasn't there. So we've decided to take an LS1 out of your regular Chevy truck. Um, it's a V8, six liter. Uh, Canton Racing Products has uh, supplied the team with uh, the vast majority of the dry sump system that we're gonna be using. Uh, Vibrant Performance has supplied the team with uh, all the fittings and lines that we'll ever need. Combine that with uh, some Turbo by Garrett GTX turbochargers, and I think we're gonna have a very potent package. Uh, even with a stock LS, uh, LS1, we're, we're projecting 700 plus horsepower. And then a, closer toward race day, we're gonna build a, a, spare, a spare motor and really turn it up uh, somewhere near 1,000 horsepower. Um, so with, with the, the weight of the car where it's gonna be and the, the kind of torque that we're gonna make, I think the car is gonna be pretty lethal this year uh, <laughs> to, the, to the competition, not to us. One of the other issues uh, for 2012 was the car had a lot of aero, uh, and with aero comes drag. We didn't have the torque that we set out to uh, when we started building the car, so this year we're gonna re redo things a little bit. Uh, we're gonna shorten the overall length uh, roughly four feet. The front end of the car is gonna be drastically different. Um, carbon fiber, very lightweight, uh, all one piece monocoque. So with those combinations, the the airflow around the car should be a little, uh, little more predictable versus trying to run a front wing. Um, and I think it's going to be a pretty good combination. So with everything we learned from 2012, uh, we're looking forward to uh, coming back for 2013. We think we can build a pretty competitive car this year and the fact that I've had some seat time on the mountain, I know a little bit more of what to expect. We're extremely motivated to get there this year and, uh, and put on a good show. So it should be a lot of fun and we'll see you all there.